Here's an old saying that I'm actually just making up. Ready? It takes a village to raise a village. I may have swiped all but one of those words, but it's so true. I mean, think of it. The amount of design and innovation that goes into the planning of a new town is huge. Electricity, plumbing, taxes, coming up with a city name that's still available on the face to Twitgram. Now, turning historic buildings into a village also takes a plethora of planning. When the goal is to tell a town's tale on a smaller scale. Okay, P.S., I really like the name Motown, but I think it's taken. When we think of fake towns, like on movie lots or in theme parks, we may not realize that they're oftentimes replicating the real deal. And in the case of the Henry Ford Museum's Greenfield Village, it's doubly complicated. Actual buildings are taken apart and reassembled piece by piece. I enlisted the expertise of Jim Johnson, the curator of historic structures and landscapes at the Henry Ford, to tell me the story behind the Village Green, also known as Greenfield Village. In Henry Ford's mind, this was the quintessential representation of sort of the Yankee New England village. And what inspired Ford, do you think? His own birthplace in 1914, he restored it. It had to be moved back to avoid being demolished from a road widening project. And that sort of got the collecting bug going. Which is the first building? Uh, oddly village. enough, it would be the Fort Myers Laboratory from Fort Myers, Florida. The Fort Myers Lab is where Henry Ford developed the Ford Flathead V8 in secret. Eventually, Ford talked Edison into building a new lab and brought the old building to right here in Greenfield Village. Moving Edison's Winter Laboratory from Florida up to Michigan. Right. How do they even do it? Well, that was a pretty simple building, but with all the buildings here, they were studied on site, photographed, and then dismantled. And as the pieces were taken off, significant pieces especially were numbered, packed in crates, and then like a big jigsaw puzzle was put back together once it got here in place. Okay, let's look over here at the general store. Yes. That was another very early acquisition of Henry Ford's from Waterford, Michigan, which is about 50 miles north of here. That building came here pretty early, but it did not get settled where it is now for up to a year. It sat on skids, and then Henry Ford finally decided where he wanted it, and that's where it was placed, where we see it today. As part of the recreation of the quintessential New England Village Green, Ford brought in the Eagle Tavern, then known as the Clinton Inn, a stop for stagecoaches. The Martha Mary Chapel, a reproduction building. Ford's Childhood School, the Scotch Settlement School, restored and moved to the village in 1929. And then over here, we have the Logan County Courthouse. And that's a courthouse where Abraham Lincoln practiced law from Postville, Lincoln, Illinois, from the 1840s. The entire village became an attraction for fellow innovators. None other than Walt Disney got inspiration from the village's Main Street District. If you could live in any building in Greenfield Village, which would it be? I'm very fond of the Daggett farmhouse. I would live in the candy shop, uh, but overnight, I would prefer that that clock not chime. Yeah, that's, it can be turned off, by the way, so. Okay. Maybe that could work. Yeah. I'm in.